Have you ever wondered how to print something that's too big to fit inside your 3D printer? Or maybe you want to print something that's got a lot of overhangs without support. Today I'll show you how. I recently reviewed this tiny 3D printer and the thing about it is, it is tiny. It actually continues to surprise me with how well it prints, but there are going to be limitations by its minuscule size. I had a request a while ago on how to do a video on how to cut up STLs so you can print them in parts and then put them back together accurately. So that's what this video is. As a proof of concept, I made this rocket, which as you can see, far exceeds the build volume of this 3D printer. But I also wanted to do something special, so I made this. This is a bearded yell printed almost entirely without support, and that's by cutting it up and putting it back together to avoid overhangs. Let me show you my proof of concept, which was this little bunny. So here is the finished product for my proof of concept, and you can see from the object browser, there's actually three objects here. So we have a bunny shell on the bottom, and it's got a hole in it. If we switch that, we've got a bunny shell on the top with a matching hole, and then we have a peg that holds the two together. Let me show you how I arrived at this. So when you first open Mesh Mixer, this is the screen you'll be presented with, and I opened the bunny that comes in built. First thing we need to do is to split it into pieces, and to do that we go to Edit, and then plain cut. Now by default, this is used for getting things flat. For instance, cutting the bottom off to make sure you have a nice printable surface. And you just hit accept to do this. It'll cut off the bottom, leave it flat. We need to do it in a different way. It's not that intuitive. I'm gonna bring my plain cut up to where I want to cut the object. And I'm gonna change it from discard half to slice, keep both, and then hit accept. Now it looks like nothing's happened but I need to go to separate shells and then that reveals that we do in fact have two different halves. Next thing we're gonna do is go to mesh mix and then if we change it from primitives to miscellaneous, we can see that amongst some pretty crazy things here, we have these two connectors. This first one here, if we drag it out, gets ready printed as is. It's got a nice flat side, so you would print it with the flat side down on the bed to avoid overhangs, except this. The second one here counts as the female part. So we're gonna drag that out and then position it. We need to turn off one half of the bunny and then use the arrows to move it into position. So we can see we have a little ridge and we're aiming to get that pretty much exactly halfway. So around there. Now what we're gonna do is hit this button here and that will duplicate it. So we've got it twice. We've already hidden the top of the bunny. Let's hide one of our two items here. And now we're gonna do a Boolean subtract. Now the order of this is quite important. We need to click what we wanna keep first, and then hold control and click the other one second. Now we come to Boolean difference, and we hit accept. We can see it's cut the hole in there, and then we're gonna come and switch those around. So we're gonna show the top, hide the bottom, and then bring back our connector. You can see it's in the exact same position because we cloned it. Once again, we click on the one we want to keep, hold control, click on the second one, Boolean difference, and accept. We have our three pieces ready to print. So we have a top, a base, and then a connector that snaps in between. Let's see how that comes off the printer. Fortunately, this printout came out just right first go, and now we have the job of assembling it. As you can see, the pins are pretty hard to get in. Once you get them started, it helps to press them on a table or something else firm to help push them in. The second half is always easier because one end is supported nicely. Now there is a little bit of a gap in between the two parts, and obviously there's gonna be some swivel unless you use more than one pin to stop it from pivoting. All right, so we know the system works. So now let's move on to the rocket and place our little pins more accurately so we can get everything connected perfectly. So here we have the rocket that I'm gonna work on and a nice thing to check for at the start is to go to inspector and make sure it's got no problems. Here, nothing has come up, so that's okay. The other thing to do is to go to edit and go to separate shells just to ensure that there's not multiple parts just resting in place and not in fact connected. We can see that I have it sitting on the base of the grid, which is gonna help us later on. And the next thing to do is to do a transform and then type in the size that we want. So my target printer has a maximum build height of 110. So I'm gonna make this 300 and cut it into 300 millimeter tall pieces. 
I'm going to type that in on the side. Let's accept that and then we're going to transform it once again just to move it up to be on the base. Let's do the plane cuts next. Notice here I've got S for snap and A for absolute toggled and that means when I move this here it's going to help me align it exactly where I want. I can hit the up and down arrows on the keyboard as I'm doing this and that will decide how much it snaps by. You'll note if I come right down the bottom here in line, it should go to zero. It means I can come with confidence up to 100 millimeters and know that I'm cutting it exactly 100 millimeters up. We'll change our setting like last time, accept, and then immediately separate the shells. We'll make sure we've got the top one selected and we'll repeat the process to cut it 200 high. So we now have the three pieces where we're going to cut the rocket. It's time to bring in our connecting pieces from Mesh Mix tab. So I've got three parts of the rocket and it's time to align these little connectors in the middle of the joins. So I'm going to start by turning off two parts of the rockets and then I'm going to have one of the connectors clicked. I'm going to come to edit transform. Now at the moment it's counting Y as up and down. So I'm going to keep that in mind and I'm going to type in my translate, which means move to zero for the X and zero for the Z. That puts it in the middle at the bottom with the rest of the rocket. And then for Y, I simply have to type in 100. It's going to move it exactly where I want. Right in the middle, I can hit accept. Let's repeat for this other one. Perfect. We're once again going to make copies of each of these. We should have two in each place. And then we're going to do our Boolean subtracts, same as before. But sometimes on objects with a really flat side, when you try to do your Boolean difference, you're going to run into a problem and it just seems to hang forever and then gives a fatal error and the process won't complete. It's actually a pretty simple fix once you know what you're looking for. First thing we're going to do is press W to turn on wireframe. And we can see that we have very large triangles. So when we try to intersect the two, the program really struggles. We're going to press S for select. We're going to paint the area that intersects and then we're going to come to edit, remesh, and put this top slider all the way to the right and hit accept. These triangles are still pretty big, so we're gonna repeat. So S for select, paint the area all around it, and then once again, edit, remesh, density up. Now when we try our process, it should be pretty straightforward. And now we're gonna repeat it another three times to put all of the holes in the object. Now we've got our three parts with the holes for the plugs and all we need to do is click and export them one at a time. After it prints, once again, we have the job of assembly. These pins were even smaller than the first one and that means they're even harder to get inside. As you can see, those pins are pretty stiff and you could always reduce the amount of perimeters to give them a little bit more flex. My son is obsessed with space at the moment, so he's very excited about this rocket. Let's have a look at how it turned out. Once again, the E3D Nano delivers. The Z banding I had in my first prints is pretty much gone. The main problem is on top there because there's no cooling fan. When it gets to really skinny bits, the quality does suffer. As you can see, the rocket is three times the printer volume. Another success, so time for a challenge. Enter the bearded yell. I reckon this is an awesome model and I've wanted to print it for a while, but the amount of support needed to print it cleanly has always turned me off. While preparing this video, I figured I could get around that by cutting it up into three sections. By doing this middle section as a separate piece, I could avoid all of the overhangs as long as I could stick it back together neatly. 
All right, here's what I'm hoping is a masterpiece. It's a low poly bearded yell off Thingiverse. And normally this thing is a bit of a nightmare to print because of all the support material needed. But you know what? I can get it really big. I can avoid using very much support material at all. And to do that, I've cut it into three sections. So let's hide some bits. We've got my top bit and I've put in four plugs there. That's going to print as is without support. We've then got a mid piece. Four plugs matching and then four plugs down here. I'm going to print it this way. There's only one bit I can see that's going to need support material and it's that bit there. And then finally we have a base. This should be very straightforward. We've got a nice flat bottom, four plugs that match and we're ready to send this one to the printer. Fingers crossed. Now I had planned to print this really big. How big? We're talking half a meter tall from this awesome X3D PLA marble filament. I measured how much filament I had left on the roll and then I went into Simplify 3D and I used multiple processes to increase and reduce the amount of infill to support it where it needed and save on plastic and time. Unfortunately, a few hours in, the filament stripped and I didn't have enough, so I had to shrink everything down to half the size. Fortunately, with a little bit of post-processing, the reprint came out quite nice. Now, because everything was shrunk down, you guessed it, those pins are smaller and even harder to get into place. As you can see, I need quite a bit of pressure to get them into place, but eventually they did come. It was particularly hard to close the top half because I didn't want to break it by crushing it in the wrong place. It did eventually go together, but as you can see, there are gaps, especially on the back where one bit lifted off and left an enormous hole. I broke out my 3D printing pen with the same filament, and guess what? It did a tremendous job. This thing continues to perform. After a bit of smoothing with a Dremel tool and some files, you can barely see the join, and I couldn't be happier with this. What a cool print. What a great model. Thanks so much to the original author. And once again, this X3D marble filament does a really good job of hiding these really thick layer lines that I printed this with. You'll be seeing this one on my set in future videos. So I hope you agree, this model in this filament is really, really stunning, even with the thick layer lines from using my fat nozzle on my TiVo Tornado. Now, of course, you could simplify this technique and simply do the plane cuts and then glue the flat surfaces together, but I wanted to push it and have a little bit more precision and how everything aligned. Let me know in the comments, have you tried this technique before? Are you gonna try it now? Do you think it's worthwhile? Is there something really big you've wanted to print on your printer but could never fit inside the print bed? Well, we've come to the end of this video. Hopefully you've learned something new. I certainly learned a lot while I was making it. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.